I'm standing in downtown Seattle on 3rd Avenue between Madison and Spring Streets. It's here that Seattle's first public school hey, opened I'm in... Sorry I'm uh, late. I how does the note? I missed my bus <laughs> and uh, what are we doing downtown? I lost my script. My as, dog ate as it. As I was I, saying, um, as I was saying, right. <laughs> Seattle's first public school, the Central School, opened right here on August 15, 1870. Wow, how big was it? Well, on opening day, it had 125 students, two classrooms, and one teacher. Wowzers, that must have been a busy teacher. Yeah, actually, Seattle has a lot of hardcore teachers, and that's why in today's Mohai Minute, we're gonna pay tribute to two of them. Oh, that starts off. Yeah, <laughs> and this it's is your, your Mohai Minute. We'll all make new ideas and thoughts to take a hold, replacing ancient theory, staring out toward the sky. In 1870, Seattle had a population of just over 1,000 residents. That same year, the city opened its first public school, the Central School, under the supervision of Mary Elizabeth, or Lizzie, Ordway. Lizzie Ordway was one of the original Mercer Girls, a group of women brought to the rugged Washington Territory in 1964 by a guy called Asa Mercer. It was his goal to balance the city's male-to-female ratio and to help fill gaps in societal roles typically filled by women, like teachers. Here at Mohai, we have two artifacts that Lizzie Ordway would have used. The first is this keepsake box. It's this wooden box here with Lizzie's name carved into the top. And we also have this school bell that Lizzie would have used at the Central School in downtown Seattle. Now, Lizzie taught in Seattle for a number of years before becoming the superintendent at the Kitsap County School District. But she's also known as one of Seattle's first feminists, forming a women's suffrage society and giving talks alongside Susan B. Anthony in 1871. And due to Lizzie's efforts, Washington women won the vote in 1910, making Washington state the fifth state in the union to give women the vote a full 10 years before the 19th Amendment was passed. Many teachers have followed in Lizzie's footsteps as take charge educators and social activists, including the inspirational Thelma Fisher DeWitty. Thelma DeWitty was one of the first African American teachers, along with Marita Johnson, to be hired by the Seattle School District in 1947. And she began teaching here at what was once the Frank B. Cooper Elementary and is now the Youngstown Cultural Center in the Delridge neighborhood. Throughout her 25-year career as a teacher, Thelma DeWitty was known for being an advocate for teachers' rights and for opposing corporal punishment used in the schools. In 1958, she became the president of the NAACP, and in 1961, she ran for city council. Holy smokes. Well, you know, Thelma and Lizzie are both remembered for the devotion they showed their students and the lasting impact they had on the schools and communities where they taught. But they are just two examples of the amazing men and women who make an amazing difference in our schools today. Yeah, teachers rock. Yeah, so thank a teacher today. Thanks. Thanks, guys. The dead dance and the living whisper through a phone, oh, oh, oh. They slap five, socialize, advise a plan